So this is how I entered it, right? I put the half, the coefficient a, right, up front. And uh, right off the bat, you should recognize that this is in vertex form. This is kind of what you're what you should be thinking when you when you try to graph something. Okay, let's let's see what I already know without even typing it in, right? So vertex form, A is negative, right? So you're pointing down. And we would say this is a wide curve. Um, Matt Allen, do you mind turning off the front lights? Thank you. It's a wide curve. How do I know that? Because A, which is right here, right? this is the value of A right here. Um, is between zero and one, so it's wide. Just an observation, that isn't always gonna be super important, but you should definitely know that that's the case. Um, I don't, uh, I'm, I can't see how many x-intercepts there are. I can tell, I can tell that, right? How many x-intercepts are there? Well, a is negative and k is negative, right? Both are negative. K negative means that the vertex is below the x-axis and it's pointing down, so no, right, zero x-intercepts. Right, like these are all things that I'm just thinking about. And so that's gonna make it a bit more challenging to graph this, actually. Um, and you would have answered all of this because I asked you to figure out the width, direction of opening, state the vertex right we can tell that just by looking at it the vertex is going to be negative 1.75 right negative 12.54 remember that right that the sign the sign changed right from whatever was in the original right the x value of your vertex will be changing signs because kind of think of it, if something is in brackets and you bring it out, you change the sign. Okay. So we know a whole bunch of information without even graphing this thing. Okay. Um, I asked you to do y-intercept. I asked you to figure out this information algebraically. You can always double check. But if it says algebraically, you have to do it by hand. You have to show me the steps at least. So here it is. H of 0 because it's h of t, right? Why is it there x and then t, right? That's my bad. But anyways, h of 0 is negative half 0 plus 1.75 squared minus 12.54. So make sure you have, you have an example, but it's good to go through this again just to be able to get this right. And you're finding the y-intercept because x is equal to 0. So that'd be negative half. Don't rush. That's just... 1.75 squared minus 12.4. So it's bed mass, right? Brackets, right? Exponents. So you do whatever is inside the bracket, then the exponent, then division or multiplication, right? And lastly, adding or subtracting, right? So you do the same. You've learned that. So negative, sorry, negative half, and then I'll just square that, right? 1.75 squared, that's 3.0625 minus 12.54. So I'm going to take this, multiply it by negative half. So that gives me negative 1.53125 minus 12.54. So I will just subtract 12.54 from my previous answer, and I get negative 14. 0.07 and it matches right so therefore you just found the y-intercept algebraically okay so this is a point you've got two points point vertex another point we need to find a third point I'll show you how to do that in a bit uh, let's graph this thing. I already entered it. 
I'm going to hit graph. Mm, I see nothing. All right. I know that this thing is pointing down, right? It's down. So most likely I have to decrease the Y min. So I'm going to do that first. I'm going to go to window. That's why it's important to know something about the curve without the calculator, right? Y min, I'm going to go, I'm just going to go negative 50 for now. And there it is. I see quite a bit of it. I see the vertex. I see the Y intercept. And obviously there's no X intercept. So how am I going to do this? Uh, I'll introduce this to you. Every point has its cousin, I call it. Every point on one of these legs has its cousin on the other side, right? Every point, except for the vertex. The vertex is the only one that doesn't, right? That's the one point where, right, everybody has a cousin until you get to the top. There's only one, and then everything else has its cousin across So because of the symmetry of this curve. So I'm going to... Watch carefully what I'm doing. I'm going to go y equals. Morning. You know how usually I ask you to put in zero there for the x-intercept? Because you're finding the cousins, but they're right on the x-axis. We don't have that now, do we? We don't have x-intercepts. I'm going to enter this value right here into y2, negative 14.07. You got to use the negative button. And I will do more of this, so don't, don't panic too much if you're wondering why this is happening. But watch, it. you hit graph, and so you know the y-intercept here, and now you're just finding a point across from it to help you graph, right? So let's, uh, let's find that intersection. That's, I'm just going to tell you what I'm writing down here on my... So I'm going to let y2 equal to negative 14.07 comma then find the intersection to get a third point this is in a bubble this should be in a bubble And let's find the intersection. So we got to go second trace five. And I'm going to go over to that one there and just hit enter three times. And it's negative 3.5, negative 14.07. There's my third point. So I, because of because of the lack of x-intercepts or no x-intercepts in this case, I have my vertex, I have the y-intercept, and I have a third point here. Do you remember table of values from grade 10? Table of values, right? You did a lot of that. We just created a table of values with three points, right? And so now we can go ahead and graph it. So I'm going to grab a ruler, okay? And I know this is focusing below the x-axis, so I'm just going to do this there and there. I'm going to focus more on quadrants three and four, okay? So you just do one of these. You use your space wisely, right? X and Y. And I'm going to go, I don't know if you noticed, but when I put in Y min here, my window, I actually went down to 50, right? negative 50 to see quite a bit of it. And so I'm going to go approximately that much. So this is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And you're like, Mr. Jackson, what if I had done something else? That's fine. As long as you're consistent. And I'm just going to go up here one and just show that I'm going up by 10. And sideways, right? Um, you go your negative 3.5 somewhere here and your negative 1.75 there right so it's not too bad so I'm just gonna go by one actually one two 
3, 4, 5. I'm just going to put a negative 5 on this end. And that's good enough. That's good enough. Okay. Ideally, on this end here, maybe I'll go up to 5 at least, though, just to show that I'm consistent, right? This is 5. This is axis x. So, yeah, you have a the scale here is 1. The scale for my y axis is 10, and that's fine. Okay. So, I'm going to go and put the points down. Negative 1.75, negative 12.54 is somewhere in there. That's the vertex, right? Then my y-intercept is 0, negative 14, somewhere in there. And then this point here, the third point is negative 3.5, so 1, 2, 3 and a half. And it should match... It should match what you have on, like, same height, so to speak. And there you go. So just go like this. And we know this is a wide parabola, right? And that's as good as it gets. This should actually be h of x. And I wrote down the equation as well. So use your, use your skills, use whatever works to make this graph happen. Most of them have x-intercepts, right? But don't just be limited to what I'm showing you. Because watch what else you could have done. If you go to y equals and just made that negative 30, let's say, you could have found these two intersections here if you wanted to, to get some extra points to have a bit more of an accurate picture, right? No problem, right? So I'm not going to be too sticky as to which points are you using, except for when the intercepts are there, you have to use them. So I'll put down somewhere on this page. I don't know where you have room, but I'll just make a note here. No x-intercepts. Find extra points to graph, OK? And I don't know if you want to highlight that, but if you flip through this, it doesn't happen very often. I'll tell you, just like in trig, I told you that 80% of the time you could use sine law. Most of the time, parabolas have x-intercepts in our scenarios, uh, or at least one x-intercept. Right? And uh, maybe I'll just use an arrow to point this point that we found here just to show you that Right? This is the third point. Third point that we found. This is the vertex. This is the y intercept. And we found that third point across from the y intercept. That's it for this part.